Was this a spontaneous uprising? Had white men tired of tolerating black men's attacks on white women? Hardly. But how do we frame it? How do we begin to understand it? June Dobbs Butts remembers the account of the riot rendered by her father, John Wesley Dobbs. Dr. Butts shares her father's account of the 1906 Atlanta race riot. He called it the horror when that horror took place. And what he felt was why it was such a horror was because it was organized. It wasn't a spontaneous uprising. It wasn't a riot in that sense. It was more of a program because the city officials took part. And the way the word went out all around the state, the way the Klan was able to organize and send truckloads of people, men and boys, up to fight, it had it took a little getting together without Xerox and email and iPod, right? So he was furious that this kind of organization took place. Definition, please. A pogrom is defined as a form of riot directed against a particular group, whether ethnic, religious, or other, and characterized by destruction of their homes, businesses, and religious centers. Usually, pogroms are accompanied with physical violence against the targeted people and even murder or massacre. But how did this pogrom, this 1906 Atlanta race riot come to be? Let's see what happens when blacks succeed. How do you spell success? Let's see. It's 1870, less than five years beyond the Civil War. Less than five years in the Reconstruction. And what are you doing? It's 1870. William Finch is elected to the Atlanta City Council. He lives in the Auburn Avenue area. It's 1870, and African Americans in Atlanta establish Wheat Street Baptist Church. It's 1876, and the Georgia Republican Convention is held in Atlanta. Thirteen whites and nine African Americans are chosen to attend the National Republican Convention in Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah, Cincinnati, up south, where whites attacked blacks in 1829, in 1836, in 1841, and they saved the bloodiest riot for 1882. On land and soil, red soil and a sweet gum tree, so scattered of grass, so profligate of pines, now just before an epic sun declines, thy sun in time. I have returned to thee, my son, I have in time returned to thee. Reconstruction ends, a lightning flash that fails to blind black ambition in Atlanta. It's 1877, and whites in Georgia institute a poll tax to disenfranchise African American men and poor white men. 1883, a news flash. The U.S. Supreme Court strikes down the Civil Rights Act of 1875. Jim Crow is set to be pleased. Wait, this just in. 1883, white conservatives in Danville, Virginia, seize control of the local government, which was racially integrated and popularly elected. Four African Americans are killed in the process. Between 1884 and 1891, 50% of the African-American men vote in Atlanta in spite of the poll tax. African-American businesses thrive in the Central Business District and on Auburn Avenue. One thing they cannot prohibit, the strong men coming on. The strong men getting stronger. 